Okay, here's my 2007 Porsche Cayman S. So it's a 987 dot one. And I just washed it yesterday, took it for a drive, washed it yesterday. And I'm going to uh, put it back up on those blocks that you can see over underneath that little mini fridge. I got to get this oil catchment rug out from under here when I lift it. Cause like an idiot, I uh, should have pulled that before I put it on the ground. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to get my brother's help. Um, he's a master mechanic because... Well, actually, he's been the number one Ferrari mechanic in all of the Americas, but he worked on Porsche forever. Anyhow, he's going to help me actually fix the issue where it's fallen out of sixth gear, and he's going to bring his tools down from D.C. I'm in Charlotte. No, he's going to bring his tools down from D.C. to fix the rear main seal, swap it out. And, uh, yeah, I'll do some uh, video along the way. Okay, so now it's time to... Take my oil rag out on, from under the car. I'm an idiot. I drove on it, and uh, I'm just, it's just under that one tire. So I'm going to lift that, and then I'm going to put my four blocks underneath each of the four tires. I'll show you that. I'll actually give you measurements of the blocks. I did them when I first did the clutch at about 65,000 miles. That's one thing that's kind of frustrating about this car is you'll see that lots of people had clutches crap out on them around 60 65,000 miles and I've done it twice again at about 125 maybe and now I've got 136,000 on it here's my battery charger I've got my battery still connected right now because I need to do a small adjustment on the window regulator on the passenger side and I want to check for height I've replaced that twice um, seems to be doing okay now but anyhow I'll uh, continue in a second when I've got the blocks placed. Okay, uh, for those who might be interested, let's get the measurements of these blocks. So, 24 inches long by five boards wide, which is 18. And I've got one, two, three pieces of well, five high. Uh, those are all two by fours. So, and then I put the little lips on in case of rolling. If I put it in neutral for some reason when it's up there. Which will probably be happening with this particular job. Because I'm sure I'm going to manipulate a uh, transmission while I'm messing with it. And also when the transmission's off, obviously it's not going to be in gear. There we go. This is the passenger side literally takes once you've got the block set up like i did literally takes five minutes um, and i'll show you from the back so you can see some clearance and whatnot i had built a second layer of, uh, of platform to get it even higher and i went in stages when i first did it but it was really too high uh it was almost it was even too high for me to, to reach the top of the transmission Anyhow, I'm going to take the uh, rear bumper off, that stuff, so um, I could measure it. In fact, maybe I will at some point, but underneath those mufflers, I'm looking at probably 16, 18 inches of clearance. Anyhow, I'll take the bumper off next after I fix that regulator on the passenger side. All right, so I know that this is not what the video is about, but there's a small screw underneath the door. That's actually, this bolt right here is for the regulator. And this is, this bolt that's in there is to adjust it. I believe it's six millimeter. Let me take a quick peek. Five. Anyhow, counterclockwise raises the window a tiny bit, which is what I need to do. So I'm going to do that, and there's another one at the front. I mean, this is the very, very front of the door. You can see the hinge there. There's one at the back. I'm going to raise them both counterclockwise uh, some amount, and then I'll use a piece of paper to figure it out if I'm tight or not. Okay. So I ended up with about two full turns, and now I'll try to... feels a lot tighter because I had a slight wind whistle in there 
I'm not sure if I was getting that on camera or not, but anyhow, that's the, that's the business. Um, so that's the window regulator. Uh, there's, there's the same window regulator that's used in the 997. And people talk about a white plastic bit that needs to be removed for the Cayman. Well, that's... Uh, just hit me in the comments. Uh, I may leave my email address somewhere in here and I can kind of describe what it is. It's just a white piece of plastic that's in that regulator mechanism that doesn't look like it does squat. Well, all it is is a spacer for the 997 that you need to remove for the Cayman and Boxster. Okay. Got the... Uh Two amp charger on. That's gonna stay on there for a couple weeks because I'm sure this thing's gonna be up for I don't know five or six weeks. But uh, disconnected the battery. Got the big old Tech Art wing on it. Um, I'm getting ready to take the rear bumper off. Um, let me see if I can figure out how to. So I just took off this piece of. Uh, material that's an insert and here I'm not sure if that's getting in the camera that's the old connection port for the articulating wing on the back which I removed um, you can see those are the, that's a hole from the uprights for the other wing and it used to run across here and what I've got here is some vinyl to prevent the wing from scraping up the paint anyhow I'm gonna get to some a couple bolts underneath here um, those are right back here um, is a uh, I think they're eight millimeter to get the tail lights out obviously both sides this happens to be the passenger side and so I'll get the tail lights out and then start taking off the bumper yeah those Nuts on those posts are eight millimeter. Easy to get to them with a box end wrench instead of a, or you could do a short socket. Um, and then in order to remove the plug, it's just squeeze on the two sides of this connection and pull it out. Okay, so I got the tail lights out. You can see that's where the three studs go through from the tail lamp, and that's obviously the electrical connector there. Same thing on the other side. And one other thing I'm gonna do while I got the thing down before I take the, is I'm gonna replace the cover that came off of that rear compartment on the passenger side. Got it in my hand right here. You know, I mean, the car is an 07, like I say, 136,000 miles. Stuff happens. I got those little felt things for the ends of the cargo cover. Um, and I got felt things on the side. You can see right there that, uh, you know, just help ru stop rubbing or prevent rubbing from from these edges of these, these things here. Okay, I'm about to remove the rear bumper cover. There's... These are T25s, so there's one there, there's one right there, and the trickiest one is, let me see, if it's, the head of it is right where my finger is now, and it faces that way, so that's the trickiest one, and then there's a series that run across the bottom. Um, so it's just those T25s, and obviously there's a uh, a plug for the rear uh, impact sensors. So let me get that going, and we'll see if I take anything along the way or just show you when it's done. Okay, I wanted to show you a couple more. They're 10 millimeters. I'm right, literally laying underneath the exhaust tips, and these are what hold the very back center bottom of the bumper cover in place. There's one on each side. So I'm literally gonna go across the exhaust tip. And there's the other one. And then there's a third one, which I've done some strategic uh, weight reduction 
but I'm never putting it back in that goes up there in the middle. And I'm going to take those three 10 millimeters, or in my case, two 10 millimeters off with a long extension so that then uh, the whole bumper cover will be loose. Cutting the light off, but here's the two other uh, attachment points on, in this case, the driver's side. Uh, they were T25s, I already removed them. And there's obviously the same on the other side. Okay, so that's the rear bumper removed. This is the connection for the rear impact sensors. And here's the hardware. Three from driver's side. Here's the two bolts from that bracket I was telling you about where I had already removed the third and never reinstalled it. There's four from the very bottom, two for each side. And there's three T25s for the light area. Um, so bumper cover's off. Here's in US, they require these rear impact guards. If you put a Euro bumper on it, all you gotta do is drill out these rivets. I think there's you know, two on the top and two on the bottom for each side. Take those babies off and you can put a Euro bumper cover on. Anyhow, uh, next is uh, snatch off the exhaust, at least from the headers on back. And I broke off the studs on those last time they were rusted and so i put stainless hardware in there hopefully i don't need to put pb blaster on them well i forgot of course the intricacies of what's going on underneath here but uh those are the three um i put bolts and nuts on and just as an fyi i may have to do it but to get to the top one easiest thing to do is take that tire off and you can get straight to that top one um so i may have to do that but anyhow i gotta take off oil this oils uh soaked uh because of the rms oil soaked tray and all that business and you can see i got oil on the garage floor and all kinds of other good stuff so I was slack last time I did the clutch 10,000 miles ago. I knew I had a slight leak, but it turned out to be bigger than I thought. And so uh, now I'm feeling the pain. And I'm going to probably post this one because it's getting long. But um, somebody in the comments, I've got to take, obviously, the flywheel off, which I didn't do last time because all I did was put on a new stage one clutch, maybe. Anyhow, um... I think the flywheel bolts are one-time use. Somebody, if they would comment on that. And I got to look up the the torque specs. I got a 101 push of Boxster projects or whatever book and can see it. And obviously it's on the internet. But um, let me know if you know if those flywheel bolts are one-time use. I'm going to take off all this under tray stuff. And then I'm uh, probably going to call it a day. More T25s holding this very, very front under tray piece. And the middle up there, I don't know if I can point to it or not, but that hole right there has got a 10 millimeter nut with a kind of a giant square washer on it to keep this under tray up against the stud there. And you can see that there's overlapping and underlapping of one tray and the other. So you just want to get those lined up properly. You can see the far side, I've got it wrong over there. This side, I've got it correct when it comes to this. Far side, I got it wrong over there. Anyhow, I'm going to take off this under tray.